And we're here in front of the WASH Project, which is a very critical institution on the west side. Um, it's a laundromat that's also a community center. It's a very unique space. And we're here because this building is going to be transformed over the next year. And one component of that transformation is going to be a solar array on the roof, which will help to provide electricity for uh, the community center and the residences in this building. That's important to push because it advances our energy democracy platform. Uh, what is energy democracy? Well, it means that communities can, can take control of their energy futures by implementing solar projects, by implementing geothermal and wind projects, by generating much more power at the community level. Uh, that power gives us a lot of benefits. It reduces our bills, it makes energy more affordable. It also produces non-carbon fuels uh, that allows us to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and save our planet. And it also creates jobs for communities that need them, like the West Side. So we're here with uh, several key supporters, Senator Tim Kennedy, Assemblyman Sean Ryan, Councilmember David Rivera. And I'm gonna, as I uh, introduce uh, our next speaker, which is a, a key partner, Solar Liberty, on this project, I'll just say briefly what is it that we're celebrating with the Cleaner Greener program today. The first component of this program is three specific solar projects up and down Massachusetts Avenue. We're calling it our solar corridor, uh, including the WASH project. So uh, two buildings um, uh, just to the east of us on Massachusetts Avenue will also be uh, getting new solar arrays to help them power uh, those buildings. And we will all, in total, we will have seven solar projects up and down Massachusetts Avenue installed within the next year, uh, including two that are, three that already exist just to the west of us. The second component of this grant is that we will be bringing solar access to everyone in Erie County. Uh, through Push Green, our energy efficiency program, we are going to be able to integrate solar as an offering to our customers, uh, especially low to moderate income customers, so that they can also reduce their bills and, and be producing clean energy where they live. Uh, and again, that will be in conjunction with our partner Solar Liberty, who's going to be speaking here um, as well. The last component of this grant is to make sure that, that the world understands that the West Side has become a, a living laboratory of sustainability and that it's community led, meaning that our folks, our members have created plans uh, to move this neighborhood in the future by having concentrated building retrofits, energy efficiency projects, renewable energy, green jobs training. All of those things coming together in a place that's walkable, in a place that's vital, a community that is moving itself forward. So we're going to have new signage, new ways of learning, uh, some, some video work around the Green Development Zone, some teaching tools, a curriculum so that when visitors come here, uh, they can learn about it. And I'll just close by saying that we have had visitors from all over the world here this summer uh, and this fall. Uh, we've had the city of Rochester coming three different times with their planning department. The city of Detroit, uh, the city of Pittsburgh um, has been learning about the Green Development Zone. Uh, community groups from all across the country. So this grant will help us teach them and learn from them about sustainability. So uh, again, thank you for, for being here. Now I'm going to introduce Solar Liberty. Pardon me. Uh, I'm Rob. Rob. Rob uh, from Solar Liberty is here to speak about um, his role in the project. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I just uh, want to say we're very proud to be part of this effort with PUSH, and, and thank you very much, Claude, for, for having us down today. Um, Solar Liberty has been installing systems for over eight years, and you know this is uh, a very proud moment for us because solar has become affordable for everybody in every community. And with PUSH, we're going to be uh, looking at over 250 systems um, here in, in Western New York and, and on the west side. And just couldn't be um, happier about the opportunity here. And really appreciate Kevin Connors and uh, PUSH Buffalo, all the, all the political help that's been uh, part of this process. So we look forward to uh, an exciting future over the next couple of years here to bring more solar to the west side. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Robert. Uh, another community speaker to explain uh, what, what happens here at the WASH Project, Barrett Gordon and Zaw Wynn, uh, who operate the WASH Project. Thank you. All right, Zaw. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody.
and he was off. I'm very. When the last five years, the old laundry they shut down. Previous old, the former owner they shut down. No successful business. I start thinking the old business with new idea. What I can do for people neighbor. Two years ago, we start for inside laundry. Take out some old equipment. We creating space for wash project. Yeah, so needless to say, Zah laid an incredible foundation, and we obviously have the best neighbors. Um, so we came in about two and a half years ago to um, sort of build on what Zah started, and we sort of opened up the wash project at Westside Valley, and uh, we sort of we create a outlet to create and engage in art, music, literacy, as well as a um, an outlet for community uh, information regarding community opportunities and cultural opportunities, and. Uh, we are thrilled to uh, be a part of this project and completely honored, and we want to thank all our partners and supporters, and we really look forward to this. We've been on the precipice of something big for two years. We've always been, we felt like we're so close, we just couldn't reach it, and it's here, and we're so excited and so honored. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I mentioned some key supporters among our elected officials who have really been with us, not just with this grant or this project, but with the Green Development Zone all the way along. Uh, first, starting with Assemblyman Ryan, who uh, not only represents us in elected office here, he actually helped to plan the Green Development Zone really from its inception, figuring out how to get control of vacant property, how to help move us forward uh, as our housing director formerly. So, Assemblyman Ryan, thank you. For thank you. Sure. Thank you. Well, it, it's always great uh, to come back to the Mass Ave corridor and actually see all the good things uh, that, that are being done. And I feel like it's a bit like coming home for a, a alumni weekend. And the Green Development Zone, uh, you know, Aaron's being very generous. Uh, we all work together on it. But I said, I don't know, that Green Development Zone, I don't really like that. Let's <laughs> call it something else. I don't think this green stuff's going to stick. Luckily, Aaron won that, that policy argument where we call it the Green Development Zone. But what we always have when we come to Massachusetts Avenue is this tremendous opportunity to talk about how public policy and government affects people on an individual day-to-day -day basis. So you know, we go to Albany and we work on this multi-billion dollar budget. And the challenge is to explain, well, how does this get back to the neighborhood level? How does this matter to people who live on Massachusetts and, and, and Barton? And you think, well, sometimes that's very hard to explain. But today is a, a great uh, opportunity to do an illustration so in New York State we have a few overriding public policy concerns one is electricity is very very costly to produce and we have these massive power plants but during the summer we don't have enough electricity to serve all the only air conditioning needs in producing power plants is really expensive so that's one of our policy conundrums our second policy conundrum is uh, as a state we've committed to reducing uh, carbon emissions, which means we want to use less fossil fuels. And our third policy conundrum is we've had a, an area of relatively flat salaries in the United States for going on a decade, but people's energy costs keep going up. So we don't want, we want to make our people to have more money, not, not, not less money. So this program we develop hits all three of those things. Uh, one, it makes it so we don't have to build expensive new power plants. Instead, we can do something a little less expensive. We could actually empower people to make their own electricity by putting on their roofs. Two, we can reduce carbon emissions. So the wonderful electricity that's going to be produced on top of uh, Zaw's uh, uh, wash project is not going to add any, any carbon emissions. And three, it's going to keep the money in our community where it belongs. I want to see Zaw and I want to see... 250 ratepayers in this immediate neighborhood send a little less to National Grid every week. That's our goal. Then they have a little more to put into the local economy. So it's a great example of how in a multi-billion dollar budget, you circulate down and you can find out exactly how $900,000 has a tremendous impact on our neighborhoods and how it helps us meet our larger policy goals. So it's great to have great partners uh, with Push Buffalo great partners in the New York State Senate with, with Senator Kennedy. And of course, I teased David Rivera this morning. I said, how come all the good things that are happening in the Niagara District? Is, is it all because of, of you, David? But it's true. The West Side and the Niagara District, 
has really become an experimentation for how we're going to define the, the new Buffalo. And it's because of open and progressive leaders like David Rivera that we're able to accomplish these, these very lofty policy goals on an individual <laughs> level. So it's, it's my honor to be part of this. And the good thing about working with PUSH is it, it's going to keep happening. Thank you, Sean. Uh, another big supporter has been Tim Kennedy, Senator Kennedy. Again, not just with this building, not with just with this grant, but with the overall vision of community-led redevelopment that you can see up and down the street there, are uh, backhoes and, and excavators right at our corner because we've had support both from the community to plan these projects and from our elected officials to get them funded. So thank you, Senator Kennedy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I also want to recognize uh, my partners in government, uh, both Councilman David Rivera as well as Assemblyman Sean Ryan, um, but who really deserves the credit here is Push Buffalo. And Aaron, with your leadership in Push Buffalo and the community-based organization, Push Buffalo coming together and driving an agenda forward that's not only good for the people of the west side and the Massachusetts Avenue project. It's good for Buffalo, it's good for Western New York, and it's a model for the state and the entire nation to follow. And we know that the international community has been paying attention to what's happening over here as well. $900,000 grant that's going to help to make our community a cleaner, greener, safer, friendlier place to live, improve the quality of life, and at the end of the day, it's going to help to create jobs in our community. Green jobs, green energy. It's an implementation of a vision that started many years ago with community support on a very grassroots level. And we're seeing the fruits of so many folks coming together and driving this agenda forward. And uh, I just want to be here to not only celebrate this achievement, and it's a true achievement of what the community can do coming together and, and, and driving this uh, green energy based initiative forward but it's a true true achievement for uh, Push Buffalo which uh, has the neighbors individuals and families on their mind when they're working in Buffalo in Albany in Washington to try to get these allocations so uh, we were uh, on the front lines myself and Assemblyman Ryan from a state perspective going to NYSERDA working with them to to make this vision a reality and I am very very confident that uh, the best is yet to come so uh, thank you so much to all of the supporters to Solar Liberty as well but Push Buffalo uh, deserves all the credit thank you, thank you and uh, another elected official who's been mentioned already but I want to say a little bit about how he relates to Push Council Member David Rivera uh, not only you know, does he live in the community and always has, um, he's also really taken an interest in the day-to-day -day lives of people in our community and our members, um, in particular our youth center and our community center that we run over on Grant Street. Uh, David has been a champion of that. <coughs> but also he attends every planning meeting that we have. He is, a, he is part of our process. He, he, he participates just as every citizen does, and we really respect him for that. So thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aaron, and once again, I just want to thank uh, Push Buffalo, first of all, for all the planning and meetings and community meetings and for seeking the community's input on many of the projects that are going up and down uh, Massachusetts and other areas of the west side. We have seen transformation. Uh, the gentleman said we're on the precipice of something great, um, and it's because of the folks that are here today. Uh, Sean Ryan, um, many of the good things that have happened on the west side in terms of delivering from Albany resources has been because of Sean Ryan. And now that we reapportioned the district and we have Tim Kennedy with us, uh, we're seeing an explosion on the good things that are happening. And I'm just a small part of that. I'm just here to facilitate and get out the way. Um, I, you know, I, it's easy for me to stand here and perhaps get credit for some of the things, but the real credit goes to Sean Ryan, Tim Kennedy, Bush Buffalo, and everyone that's here in the community. Uh, all I can say is thank you on behalf of the community that I represent. Thank you. Thank you, David. And before I introduce our last speaker, I do want to just also uh, give some credit to our architect and our team, Kevin Connors. 
um, who has designed really a, a, a really visionary design for this building, that not just the solar, but really we're actually going to add a third story to this building, and we're going to give the WASH project some more room for their community center by pushing um, some square footage back there. Um, last speaker is, is David St. Rodriguez. Uh, David is, is really critical to PUSH. He is a board member of PUSH. He also is the board member who is in charge of our community development committee, which leads the planning as we move forward. And what's important to PUSH is that people uh, who are planning this community are from the community and know this community. And one thing we know about David is that because he has literally logged more miles in this neighborhood as a delivery uh, person for Lenovo, um, driving up and down every street day after day, he definitely knows this community. Uh, and we're, we're happy to have him here. Last thing I'll say is that this is important, I think, an important day to, to really be celebrating renewable energy uh, because the governor made a good decision yesterday, which is that recognizing that we really do need to move away from carbon fuels, from extractive processes like fracking. Um, and the answer is right here with us. It's solar. Um, it's, it's geothermal. It's wind. Uh, so we're celebrating that decision as we show that we can move uh, ourselves forward. So David, close us out. Thank you. I would like to thank everybody for being out here. I know it is cold. Um, I would like to thank the officials that uh, elected for sales. I would like to thank Eric Garley for everything he has done. We have come a long way in all this time that we've been here. We've been, uh, we're a young organization. We're less than 10 years old. And we are being looked at by a bunch of people from around the world. But what I'm actually happy about is that we got grassroots in our blood, and we got great organizers, and we got great people working. Um, Clark is one of the persons that I cherish the most in this company because day after day, he's doing something. Jen McCosey, the organizing team, Megan, everybody's doing something. Brenda, she's part of the community just like me, and everybody of this community wants to see better, and now that we've seen a little bit better, we are thankful that we got the CDC, the Community Development Committee. We also have so much more that we're going to do. In the, in the near future, we are going to try and succeed at getting energy for free. This way, we don't have to pay these multi-million companies that don't really care for the little guy. We got weatherization programs that we are doing. We are doing a push green, push blue, push itself. We are on the one umbrella, one neighborhood, one block, one city. That's what we all about, and we're going to continue doing this. I'm just another humble servant of the community. I do not ask for nothing in return. I just thank everybody for doing what they're doing, because they continue doing it, and I enjoy it so much. So I am so happy for you that finally your business is, is done, and let's keep moving forward with everything that we're doing, because we only need one person to make a change. And now we are a whole bunch of persons making a change. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. So uh, that concludes our program for today. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions for any of us.